Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon 1 Corinthians 10, 1-13 Verses 1-4 Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ you see, then, dear brothers and sisters, that the possession of privileges is not everything. Paul would not have us to be ignorant that all those who were with Moses in the wilderness had privileges of a very high order. Did they not all pass through the Red Sea and so escape from their powerful and cruel foes? Did they not all drink of water which gushed forth from the flinty rock? Were they not all fed with manna from heaven? Yet their privileges did not save them, for while they had the five privileges mentioned in these four verses, they fell into the five great sins of which we are about to read. And so their privileges, instead of being a blessing to them, only increased their condemnation. 5, 6. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, or warnings, for just as they were overthrown in the wilderness, so may we be, notwithstanding all the gospel privileges which we enjoy, if we are not true believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. If the life of Christ is not in our souls, all the privileges of the church of God cannot save us. These things were our examples. 6 to 11. To the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be you idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur you, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for example. The apostle has told us that before, but he tells it to us again, to warn us, by these beacons, lest we come to a similar destruction to that which fell on those ancient unbelievers. 11, 12. And they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Therefore let him that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. We also are to take heed lest we fall, especially those of us who think we are standing securely. You have seen how terrible was the fate of those unbelievers in the wilderness who never entered into Canaan, but left their carcasses in the desert. Now Paul urges us, with such beacons to warn us, to take heed lest we also fall as they did. 13. There has no temptation taken you but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. O Lord, fulfill your gracious purpose unto your servants. Hold us up, lest we fall. We are very weak. Keep us for your dear son's sake. Amen.